Today we're going to be talking about solving systems of quadratic and linear equations. So we've already looked at how to solve systems of linear equations when it was just two lines and we looked for where they connected and wherever they crossed that was the solution, right? So they could cross in one point or they could cross in no points or they could cross in infinite points when they're laying on top of each other. So when we're dealing with systems of quadratic and linear equations we have something like this where we have our quadratic graph and that gives us a parabola and our line and it can cross, right? So we're looking at a situation where we can have either two solutions if the line crosses at two places, one solution if it were to cross right here along the bottom, and then some places where the line may not intersect the quadratic parabola at all. Our job is to determine how many solutions there are and where they are. So in order to solve this, we're gonna be pretty much using the same tools we used before when we were finding the solution to linear equations, graphing, elimination, and substitution. I may do a separate video on how to graph on paper. We're gonna focus on how to graph using a graphing calculator. We'll talk about how to solve using elimination, and we'll talk about how to solve using substitution. So let's start this party with a word problem using elimination. Here we go. Since opening on day, attendance at pool A has increased steadily, while attendance at pool B first rose and then fell. Equations modeling the daily attendance Y at each pool are shown below where X is the number of days since opening day, so right there. On what day was the attendance the same at both pools, and what was the attendance? So two things we want to note, um, that the pool B, the uh, attendance first rose and then fell, that's going to be our parabola. And then also, on what days was the attendance the same at both pools? That's where we're looking for those lines to intersect. And then what was the attendance? We'll be finding either the x or the y coordinate. So I've already copied down our problems and stacked them on top of each other, just like normal for elimination. You'll remember that when we had quadratics before, ax squared plus bx plus c, we would often see them equal to 0 so that we could find where they intersect the x-axis down here, right? We want to see where they intersect the x-axis, and that was our solution. So what we're going to try to do is get both of these equal to 0. Now, the easiest way to do that would be to multiply through by negative 1 on one of these guys. So let's do that. We'll multiply through by negative 1 down here on the bottom. And that will give us the following. We will have a negative y, right? And then our 20x will become a negative 20x. And our positive 124 will become a negative 124. And then what we'll do is we'll just add those together. So y plus negative y gives us 0, which is exactly what we want right there. Negative x squared plus nothing is going to give us negative x squared, right? So imagine that 0 being there. 39 minus 20 will give us positive 19x. And then 64 minus 124 will give us a negative 60. Then we need to take a look and see what we can factor out. We have this nagging little negative there, so we can factor out a negative 1. So we'll get a negative 1 times x squared minus 19x plus 60. Then we're going to factor that, and that's going to give us something like this, where we have an x here. If you'll remember your factoring from before, we know that we have a positive sign here and a negative here. That means both of these are going to be negative, and we need to find factors of 60 that give us 19. Now, our factors of 60 are 1 and 60, 2 and 30. That's not going to give me 19. 3 and 20. That's not going to give me 19. 4 and 15. Hey, wait, that will give me 19. So if I add those together, if I take 4 and 15, I'll wind up with x squared minus 15x minus 4x, which gives me negative 19x plus 60. But what about my negative 1? Well, he's just going to sit out here. We're not going to worry about him. Think of it as something similar to uh, reducing a fraction. So what we'll wind up with is that x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 15. So technically that's an or there. x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 15. Now all that's left is to find the y values for our coordinates and we'll have our solutions. Remember that we can substitute our x values into either one of our original equations. So I'm going to use the easy one. I'm going to use the line, the linear equation, and I'm going to say y is equal to 20 times 4 plus 124 or y is equal to 20 times 15 plus 124. And then I'll punch that into my calculator, which will give me y is equal to 204, or y is equal to 424. So thinking about these as points when they intersect with our graph, we would have points 4, 204, or point 15, 424. 
But think about it in terms of the question itself. On what days was the attendance the same? Well, it was the same on the 4th and the 15th day. However, attendance at the pools on day 4, on day 4 the attendance was 204, and on day 15 it was 424. There you go.